Hello, everyone. Welcome along. Here's an update on Bitcoin and some of the other cryptocurrencies and where we are in the market. Um, in the US, the inauguration day yesterday, um, the markets have taken quite well to it. The S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, they've all taken well to the inauguration. They're all flashing green, whereas Bitcoin um, appears to be pulling back now after its sensational rally in quarter four and just into this new year. Uh, Bitcoin's following a very similar pattern to previous Januaries, where it makes a high early in January and then it, it really drops off and consolidates and goes down to finish January, to end January. January is, um, is notorious for creating these highs on the first week of January. Um, in, in our case, it was what? It was around the 9th of January, I think, the high of the 42,000. And where are we now? So on a weekly chart, from the March, from the real lows in March, when this market really sort of started, you could say that that is the beginning of the bull market. We're currently at, we've we've come up and we've created our high. Um, we are currently just at the 236 Fibonacci level, which is at 32,942. It'd be interesting to see if this weekly candle closes above that level. Because um, we're still way, way ahead of the mean averages. I mean, the one that we always look at, because in, historically, it's been so important to Bitcoin in, in uptrends, is the 21-week EMA. And that, at the moment, stands at 21,894. It's a long way off. And what we could see here in Bitcoin, what I'm expecting to see, is more consolidation is more down and consolidate where we could, if you're looking at the cursor where the cursor is, let's get an arrow. We could go sideways from here. We could head up, go up to there, but then head down there. Um, so, you know, we could, I don't think we're going to go and retest the highs. I think we're going to consolidate in this range now. Where, we, where we've where been up here, this is probably better to look on a smaller time frame chart. But what I'm saying is, is this 21-week EMA, wait for that to catch up. When that catches up and it gets to about 30, We could be in to March. We could be here. And Bitcoin will still have not have gone up and tested those highs of 42,000. We could touch on that moving average around here, around the middle of March, when it this will have caught up. And this will be around here. And then rally onwards and upwards from there. Um you know, we were celebrating hard when it got to 30 not long ago. Let's um, quickly look at these on this chart. So the RSI is still overbought, but it's coming down nicely now. Look, this is healthy territory. And between 50 and 70 is a healthy range to get into for more upward action, for more consistent upward action if we remain overbought that's not good for bitcoin so this cool off period is just what the doctor ordered we needed this cool off period we've had substantial gains it is hard for people who you know check when you're checking the price often and it's not what it was the week before but just go back three weeks ago we were celebrating so much when it went past 30 any bulls out there, any Bitcoiners, when it went past 30,000, we were absolutely overjoyed. Like we were, we were, we were shocked. It was, it was unexpected. We didn't expect it to go from 20 to 30 like it did. And, you know, we broke through 30 and the elation was everywhere. Crypto Twitter was, 
you know, the excitement was palpable. And now, you know, just because we've been up higher now, this being at 32 now, it's like we've got a lot of depressing um, memes. We've got a lots of people ghastly saying bearish things, you know, that, that, that you know, it, it's an emotional market, but you, you have to sometimes take this short term um, fear that you have that that it's going to go lower. Just take take this short term. You know you have to look at it as a, as a long term thought sort of thing. Yes, you'll have your traders that will be making the most of it um, in and out with shorts. Um, you know, uh, lots of people are recommending shorts now. I would still be cautious about shorting Bitcoin after such a phenomenal uptrend for three months yeah we've had what we've had 11 days of pullback 10 days of pullback of correction retrace you know we had three months of incredible bullish momentum you know is 10 does 10 days mean that now we're in a bear market for good you know i wouldn't go against Yes, we're breaking market structures a little bit now as we've come down. We haven't broken the major market structures. You know, on a, on an hourly chart, we'll go on the hourly chart. Let's have a look briefly at the stochastic RSI, which is also encouraging because we have come out. Oh, sorry about that. We've, we're not overbought anymore. We were overbought for such a long time and we're no longer overbought. Yeah, the blue's below the orange, which is which is a bit of a bearish sign. But we needed this, this to come off overbought on the weekly chart. Let's hop over onto the daily chart where we can see things in a little bit more detail. So they're the lows from last Monday. We haven't... We haven't gone below them yet. Um, we had an accumulation zone, which we've gone below now. That was at about 34, 34,000. Look, the RSI now is, is oversold. We're oversold on this RSI, on the, which is a sign that there could be a bounce soon. There could be a bounce back up. The RSI on the daily chart, and it's in. It's well into the healthy territory where there's room for upwards, but it, it's it's slightly bearish being under fifty. We can't tell too much by that. We've gone below the twenty day moving average. We've gone well below that now, and so. The next line of support is at the 50, which is at 27, um, 898. Um, that's worth looking at. Now, I, I think this is similar. If you look at this, let's get rid of that one. If you look at this, um, this is similar to what happened last June. I'm not saying the same thing's going to happen again. Oh, no. But this is similar to what happened in June. Um, so, yeah, look, I think we could go up to here sideways and down until that 21 week moving average catches up. I mean, the 200 is at 16,000, you know, and, and that's the that's the trend change that most chartists look for. If you're below there, you're in a bear market. I mean, using that as a barometer, it's, there's more to it than that. There's a lot more to it. But yeah, the RSI is bearish for the, for the most bearish it's been. Well, we was low. We're, we're where we are when we started this incredible bull run in October. And the RSI on the daily is a good is a good thing to use. I mean, 
because we came down to here, look, we came down to 50 on the 11th of December. And the 11th of December was here when we was around the 18,000 mark. And then we then we went on that astonishing bull run when we broke 20 from the 11th. So the RSI is in a, is in a healthy position for a big move upwards. You know, when it's up here, it's stretched. But there, look, it was there. And we look, and we still had that massive move upwards, but it came down to there, and it came into the healthy range. The RSI is quite a, a good indicator to use. But I want to show you what I think about. Um, it's very similar to the 2019 price action. In 2019, look, remember back to that um, when we came out of the lows in January, we had that bullish move, and we came up. And we had a high and a huge spike down to 10, low 10,000. And then a few days later, we came back up. We came back up into the 13 range. So how many days later was that? That was a few more days later. We had the 13 and then it was, what, a week, over a week later. We came back up and we went into the 13 range and then we came down. Now, then we created a series of lower highs. So I'm not saying we're going to do that now, but this is quite similar where you create the high, come right down and then come back up and you don't get above that. You, you create a lower high. Well, we've done the same now, haven't we? we? We went up to 42. We went up to 42. There came down all the way down to 30 and then we went back up created a lower high so what could happen now is we could create another lower high and that that is quite a likely thing to happen um it often happens um could this be a double bottom we'll have a look at that in a second what quite often happens is it'll come down um, it might, so it'll go to those levels again, test that level again, and then go back up. It could make a lower high. And that is really reminiscent of what markets do over a longer term consolidation period. Um, they make lower highs and the lows, that, that, that becomes a descending triangle. And they've been particularly bearish in the past. In 2018, that's what we did all year. We kept going up, making lower highs, coming back down, not making lower lows, but just creating, I remember 6,000, I think it was about 6,100 or around that level, of between 5,900 and 6,100 in 2018 was a level, and but it just kept going up, making lower highs. So it'd go up there, come back down to there. And then the next one would go up, but it would be a lower high. So what you'd have is a descending triangle. So I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm not saying that's going to happen. But that is what has happened in 2018 throughout the year. In 2019, we had that June high, and then we had this descending triangle, and it looked the same as the same setup. It's looking a similar setup already. Now, we have a lot of macro factors that are pointing in the direction that that is not going to happen this time. But early stages, well, I wonder, I wonder. Listen, we're, we're, we're at a different stage of the four-year cycle with the halving at the moment. Um, Usually in the past, the window of opportunity for bull market has been 16 months after the halving. Now, some folks are saying that this time round, that might extend because of the macro factors, because of the Fed um, expanding the balance sheet. All the environment is set up for anti-fiats to flourish um, in this this economic environment. Um you know, the, the dollars remaining around 90, we'll have a look at that in a minute. 
we're, we're still, you know, according to stock to flow as well, we're still early. We're, we're about where we were in April, 2017. And when we had a, when we had a pullback and pullbacks in this market can be about down to that 21 week EMA. That's the one I look at. And, um, so on a daily chart, it's around about 150 day moving average. Um, but you could expect to see this, but more often than not, these do break to the downside. And in 2018 and 2019, I mean, I could go back and show you exactly this pattern playing out. Um, so we don't want to get caught up in a pattern like that. Um, let's go on the hourly chart. So yeah, those lows there, let's get rid of that, make this bigger. So I'm waiting really until these lows are tested here. You know, this low here. So we've been there and that's around there. So if that market structure gets broken there, this, this, this is market structure breaking. If that breaks, that's what I'm looking for. A break of there, below there, um, could send it a lot, lot lower, um, down to that 20, down to that 50 day moving average. I'd be looking at there if that, if this gets broken, but if not now, what is the definition of a double bottom? So, with bearing in mind that descending triangle could could begin to start playing out, what we could see here is if this is a double bottom, it it'll bottom here, it and it'll break out from here, and it'll break away. It'll break away. It won't make another low. You see that has made one lower high. Is that another lower high? On an hourly chart, yes, it is. I suppose. So if, if, if it comes up to here and goes sort of like up to here and goes to 36, that would be bearish, I think, because it's a lower high again and you're making this descending triangle. So I'm, I'm waiting eagerly to see if this market structure here gets broken. Um, I mean, there's a little bit of action around here earlier on this year, around the 4th of Jan, where we, where we came up we tested a level there. So if you extend this along here, you can see that there's been there's been a bit of trading action around that level. Around the level that we've just bounced from, or where we're at now. Yeah, it lost the 618 from that low there. If we measure from there, it's all the way at the 786, isn't it? So yeah, for me, Bitcoin, you have to look at the big picture and the fact that when we broke through these levels early January, um, when we came up here, we, we went through 30K there. There was a lot of excitement, you know, and that was, it was, you know, 19 days ago. And we went all the way up to 34 in that, in that run. Um, and then we came down and we checked down here, didn't we? This would be another level to look at this level here, because this corresponds here. That level there um, corresponds to the 50-day moving average. 
So if Bitcoin does come down, 